Welcome back. Well, one of the highlights for me over the summer break was attending some of the stag sales down here in the South Island. It's so cool to be in a room with so many people connected to the industry, looking and seeing what things are worth, and also, I guess, testing myself to say if I can pick out the ones I think are going to go for good money in this sale catalogue. Joining us now is Tony Conqueror, National Deer and Velvet Manager for PGG Rights. And, and Tony, I saw you at the Netherdale sale. We spoke to David Stevens on Monday's show. So he had lot one that went for $135,000. We are seeing some big money coming through. What about the bull sales as well? Good afternoon. Yeah, hi, Rowena. You're right. Across the board, um, stag and bull sales, uh, that's Elk and Wapiti bulls, have um, had good clearances. And um, I'd say most are probably 10% at least up on last year as far as value. Um, and, uh, yeah, the difference is really the, the bull sales are more related to uh, venison mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the velvet as sort of a uh, an add-on. Um, so you know, going on venison values in the last two years, that has not been um, positive, um, but uh, there's a turnaround effect there now. So that's starting to filter through to farmers, which is great. Yeah. What numbers are we talking about in terms of venison at the moment, Tony? Well, venison sitting around seven dollars a kilogram as far as the schedule goes, but this is a historical low period or. Um, time of the year when product is exported frozen. So, um, you know, that's 30% higher than this time last year, um, albeit we're well behind lamb and beef. But, um, you know, there's the optimism there that things are going to start to increase because we're seeing Europe, um, you know, starting to increase their consumption and air freight went really well up to Christmas um, despite all the restaurant restrictions they have. Uh, the U.S. Food Service, it's returning. Um, and, of course, uh, sea freight, as we all know, is a, a real logistical nightmare. Yeah. Um, you know, venison is a fantastic healthy protein, and I just don't think that we're, um, we're, we're selling enough of the healthy attributes that it has. So, you know, going forward, there's also these new markets opening up for the, um, for the retail sector alongside the, um, the food service we've already got. Yeah, brilliant. So now what are we looking at in terms of velvet? This has been really high, speaking to the deer farmers and the velvet farmers I know. It really has been the saving grace while we've seen that food service so depressed around the world as a result of COVID-19. But when these prices do kind of hit some of these highs, it is quite an unstable market as I understand it. Yeah, it can be. We've um, had an increase this season of 25 to 30%. Um, on last season, which um, probably dipped around about um, 20% on the previous one due to COVID. So we're we're back up, but we're well above uh, where we were two years ago pre-COVID. And look, that's the effect of COVID having on consumers, looking for products that are going to boost your immune system. And um, of course, New Zealand um, has safe, legitimate product, which um, can be trusted. Uh, And of course, with borders uh, being very, very tight around China, Korea, uh, not a lot of uh, stray product, we might call it, finds its way into the market. So, um, But, yeah, there, look, there is a, a risk of instability. I think some of the prices, particularly now for regrowth, uh, the second cut and spiker, um, are exceeding what the market can be uh, actually affording to pay. Wow. So that's squeezing the margins of these buyers and remembering, too, with COVID that a lot of these buyers can't obtain their product. Uh, frozen imports are being held by the government or the regionals, um, the regional counties, due to the fact they just don't want to see any risk of COVID over the sort of um, Chinese New Year and Winter Olympic period. So, um, you know, that could cause a bubble effect down the line going into next season. But look, at this stage, we're taking everything we can. Um, people need cash flow. It's a welcome return to profitability and, um, yeah, onwards and upwards. And, um, yeah, it's, it really has had a massive effect on the, the positivity of stag sales and um, it's held the venison sector where it is too. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic to see. Tony, just finally, it always uh, never fails to amaze me the impact on the whole venison velvet market from things like the Olympics. You know, it's not as if that would affect uh, the lamb market or the beef market or something like that. It, it really is such a niche that has so many different uh, fingers and pies, I guess you could say, almost that can affect it. Yeah, quite right. Yep, that's exactly right. And um, a lot of it's uh, to do with image, I guess. And um, as we know, China are pulling the levers on a, a lot of our products and um 
venison, although it's not um, recognised as a stable part of their diet, um, there's some, some new work going on by uh, venison companies from New Zealand into China, which um, hopefully will we'll tap on that potential going forward too. Yeah, we love catching up with Hunter McGregor from Shanghai on that matter as well. But it is, it, it's a fascinating industry. Have all the stag and bull sales wrapped up now? That's it for the year? Yeah, they have, yep. Uh, the last one was uh, two days ago. Um, Clackenburn Elk, they sold 71 out of 74 bulls. Uh, an average of about three seven, I believe, um, up on last year, and you know that um, that's a good way to, to wrap up the the stag and bull season. So yeah, good stuff. All things going well. Tony Conqueror, National Deer and Velvet Manager for PGG Rights, and thanks so much for your time. Okay, cheers, Rena.